Let's take a look here. Steve A has the first question. How can we know the difference between unhealthy repression and healthy self-restraint of sexuality? Well, I would say, you know, part of what constitutes ethics, let's say, first of all, let's start, let's think about ethics to begin with. So what's the point of conducting your life ethically? <clears throat> the answer to that isn't so that you follow the proper rules precisely. The, the answer to that is so that you balance your life so that it's as productive and meaningful as it can possibly be. And that would be productive and meaningful for you with any luck, but also for people around you. That would even be better. And, and for you now and next week and into the future. So it's sort of a variation of the philosopher Immanuel Kant's moral dictum, which was act such that your action becomes a moral uh, universal, something like that, although I think that it's it's better phrased across time and across people like that. Um, so when you're thinking about an ethic that has to do with any fundamental motivation like sexuality, you have to think about it in the context of the rest of your life. Um, the, the question is whether or not, what, what did I say, what, what did I read at one point that I really liked with regards to sexuality? Who's in control? That's the issue. Is it you or is it the sexuality that's in control? Is, have you integrated your sexual life into the rest of your life so that the whole thing makes a harmonious balance? And are you in charge or is it in charge, so to speak? Because if you're not in charge with that harmonious balance, then things are going to waver wildly out of control and you're going to find yourself in dreadful trouble. That, that happens whenever any given drive or really any given value predominates to the exclusion of all else. Now, it seems to me that sexuality is best handled within the confines of a relationship. Um, that's the classic ethical solution to the problem. It's because sexuality brings with it a tremendous amount of responsibility. Now, people don't like to think that, especially people who I would say are low in conscientiousness, let's say, or high in impulsivity. It's easy for people to believe in, what would you call it, casual sex, which is not something that I think exists, because I don't think you can divorce sex from its sociological or political or economic or psychological consequences. And I would say the endless scandals that have plagued the United States in particular in the last year with regards to sexual behavior are proof positive that there's no such thing as casual sex. I think the reason for that is that the consequences of sex are too dramatic. It's not just pregnancy and disease, let's say, which are both um, as dramatic as consequences can be in life, but also the fact that it, there's no disentangling sexual behavior from emotional behavior. Or maybe you could say even worse, if you try to disentangle your sexual behavior from your emotional behavior, then I think what happens is that you end up cold and cynical. I mean, if you're, let's say, if you're a, a serial, if, if you're a, uh, if you have a lot of one night stands and a lot of casual partners, then first of all, there's not much discrimination between one partner and the other. And so in some sense, you're in a loop and, and just repeating the same act over and over. But you can't, there's nothing deep about it. There's nothing that, that enables you to establish a relationship with another person. And I think that that's a, I think that you corrupt your soul in that way and that, you hurt yourself across time and of course you're going to hurt other people as well. So I'm not a big admirer of the casual sex idea. I think it's a demented adolescence fantasy uh, fundamentally. It just doesn't work out in the real world. Now, healthy self-restraint. Well, with regards to sexuality, it's the same with everything else is that there's, there's the necessity to forego immediate gratification for the purpose of medium to long-term thriving, let's say. So, if your sexuality is integrated in an ethic that encompasses the rest of your life, and if it serves that ethic, then I would say it's properly restrained. If it's unhealthily repressed, well, then you're angry and bitter and resentful and cursing the opposite sex or perhaps the same sex if you happen to be gay for failing to recognize your particular form of sexual, uh, what would you call, attractiveness. I think resentment and anger are a good indication that there's something wrong with the manner in which your sexuality is restrained. 
So I hope hopefully that's a decent answer. Kotoku na kage o shota mama de.